Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to continue talking about equivalent fractions. Our learning goal for today says I can explain why fractions are equivalent using models. So that means we're just going to be drawing some pictures or looking at some fraction strips to help us talk about why fractions are equivalent to each other. So the materials that you'll need for this lesson are your dry erase board. You'll need three fraction strips. So they will be eight and one half inch by one inch strips, blank piece of paper, and your lesson 25 template. I know this is lesson 27, but we're going to be using our lesson 25 template, just the first page, which looks like this. Okay. Friends, if you don't have your fraction strips, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to make those in the video. So make sure that you at least have paper and scissors and glue and a ruler, um, actually to be able to make those. So you need a couple extra things. All right. So how to make our fraction strips. So you're just going to take a regular sheet of paper. That's eight and a half. Okay. That's a regular sheet of paper. Um, and then you're going to measure one inch straight across. You'll draw one line, then grab your scissors, cut straight across, and do that three times and you will have three fraction strips just like this, okay? So it's the whole width of the paper this time uh, when you're looking at it um, across the way, okay? So that'll be easier to cut those fraction strips this time. All right, so we're gonna grab our lesson template first, so make sure you have that. All right, so each rectangle represents one whole. Partition each rectangle into thirds. So all three rectangles, you're gonna pause the video, partition them into thirds, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here's my first one in thirds, my second in thirds, and my third rectangle in thirds. So remember, those are all still each on their own representing one whole. So how can we double the number of units in the second rectangle? So we have three right now. How could we double them? Yeah, we could cut each third in two. So go ahead and partition the second rectangle. So cut each third into two, just your second middle rectangle there. Okay, so pause the video. Okay. All right, let's look at how we can do that. Here we go. Split it into, cut each one into two, right? So how can we triple the number of units in the third rectangle? So we're only at three right now. So when we doubled from three, we went to six. Now we're at three still in the third rectangle, but we need to triple it. So it's kind of like counting by threes, right? So three, six, nine. Oh goodness. How do we make this into nine parts? Yeah, we can cut each third in three. Okay, so go ahead and partition the third rectangle. Um, so each third partition into three parts. Pause the video, do that, click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here's what you would have now. All right, so what's our new unit? We have ninths, right? We're gonna label the fractions in each model. So here we have thirds, sixths, and ninths. Don't worry friends, you don't have to label one third, one third, one third. You don't have to label the unit fraction, just label underneath that it's thirds, sixths, and ninths. And then we know, because we've been working with fractions for so long now, and we're so awesome at unit fractions, that just a unit fraction is one part of that. So we have one third for each one of those parts. In the sixth, we have one sixth, and in the ninth, we have one ninth for each one of those parts. Okay, so pause the video, label third, sixth, and ninths underneath each model. All right, friends, next step. What's the difference or what is different about these models? So if we look from our thirds to our sixth to our ninths model, what's different? Well, they started as thirds, right? But then we cut each into different parts. The parts are different sizes, right? That's different. And they're different units. We have thirds, sixths, and ninths. What's the same about these models? Yeah, they're all, one whole is the same size, right? Each one of the full rectangles 
is the same size. What do you notice about the relationship between the number of parts and the size of the parts in each model? So like for thirds, there's three parts. And what do you notice about the size of those parts compared to the size of maybe the sixth parts or the ninth parts? Yeah, well, so three is just is the smallest number, but thirds have the greatest size. And the more lines we drew to partition, the size of the parts got smaller. Isn't that always so funny? We're thinking, used to thinking like the larger the number, the bigger something is. But with fractions, the larger the number in the bottom in our denominator means that it's actually getting smaller with those parts. All right, so grab your fraction strips now. Okay, so we need these three right here. Fold all three fraction strips into halves. So pause the video, fold each one into halves. You can do that and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, into halves, here we go. Those are all into halves now. So fold your second and third fraction strips to double the number of units. So just the second two, leave one of them alone in halves, keep it folded, and then what do you do? Yeah, right, remember friends, when we've done this with previous fraction strips, you're just gonna fold it in half again. Okay, so now you should have fraction strips that have how many parts? Yeah, four parts. So the new unit on these fraction strips is fourths. Yeah, so the first one is halves and the second two are fourths. All right, so we're gonna fold our fourth strip to double the number of units again. So how are we gonna do that? Yep, fold it all back up again, you're right. And then fold it one more time in half. Okay, so do that and then click play when you're ready for the next step. Okay, friends. All right, so now, whew, what's the new unit on these fraction strips? Eighths, because we have eight equal parts. All right, so compare the number of parts and the size of the parts with the number of times you folded the strip. So we're just thinking again about how many parts there are and the size of those. All right, so what happens to the size of the parts when you fold the strip more times? Yeah, the more fraction strip, the more the fraction strip was folded, the smaller the parts got. Yeah, that's because we folded to make more units. All right, so now you're gonna glue your fraction strips in a column. Make sure that the ends line up. Glue them from the largest unit to the smallest unit. So pause the video, do that, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, so here's what yours should look like. Now we're gonna use your fraction strips to find the fractions equivalent to four eighths. So you're gonna shade and label the equivalent fractions. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is sh shade four eighths on your fraction, uh, fraction strip that has eighths. Then you're looking at your fraction strip that's in fourths and halves to see can you shade an equivalent fraction to four eighths that takes up the same amount of space on that one whole fraction strip. Okay, so pause the video, shade the equivalent fractions to four eighths and label those equivalent fractions and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So here we have four eighths. Then I can shade my fourths until I cover the same amount, which is two fourths, and then my halves, which is one half. So one half is equivalent to two fourths and also equivalent to four eighths. All three of those fractions are equivalent fractions because they cover the same amount of space on one whole. All right, so what do you notice about the size of the parts and the number of the parts in the equivalent fractions?
Well, you can see that there are more eighths than halves or fourths shaded to cover the same amount, right? And we know that because as the number of parts gets larger, the size of them gets smaller. So we need more eighths to cover the same space as fourths and even halves because the halves and fourths are larger pieces or parts. So that's because the shaded area in equivalent fractions doesn't change, even though the number of parts gets larger. It's still taking up the same amount of space on that whole rectangle. So the entire rep rectangle represents one hole in my picture. Okay, so this is one hole. Draw my shape on your board and label the shaded fraction next to it. So you're gonna need your dry erase board for this one. So pause the video, draw the shape and label the shaded fraction and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Okay, so one fourth is what we have shaded. So how can you partition this shape to make an equivalent fraction with smaller units? So what's the other smaller units that we can use when we do fourths? We just did those, some of those on our fraction strips. Hint, hint. Okay, we can cut each fourth into two pieces to make eighths. You got it. All right, so you're going to draw a hole or draw a new hole. So it needs to be the same size as the rectangle that you drew the first time for your fourths and partition it into eighths and shade an equivalent fraction to one fourth and then label the equivalent fraction. So pause the video, draw your new rectangle into eighths, and then find the equivalent fraction and label it. So shade and label the equivalent fraction, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, so here's what I came up with. Here is my rectangle, the same size as my other hole for fourths. It's partitioned into eighths, I know that I need to shade one part. Oh, that's not enough yet, right? Two parts, oh, that covers the same amount. So two eighths is equivalent to one fourth, or one fourth is equivalent to two eighths. You could say it either way. All right, so right on, friends. You guys did a great job explaining why fractions are equivalent using models. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends. <laughs>